If your goal is to build bigger, more prominent biceps that bust through your shirt sleeves, yet you're limited by time or equipment, then listen up. Because in this video, I'll be sharing the only three dumbbell exercises you need to build head turning biceps worthy of envy every time you walk in the gym. But first, let's quickly go over the basic anatomy of the biceps and their functions so that you can understand exactly what muscles are involved and what movements they're responsible for. The biceps are a muscle group located in the upper arm and as the name suggests, divided into two heads. A short head located on the inside of the arm closer to the body and a long head which sits on the outside of the arm further away from the body. Both heads originate on the scapula and converge to insert into the forearm. Often overlooked when talking about building bigger biceps is a muscle known as the brachialis. The brachialis is vital when it comes to arm thickness from the front and is normally well developed and visible on most professional bodybuilders. The brachialis sits just lateral to the biceps between them and the triceps. Now that you know what muscles you're looking to target, Target, what exactly do they do? The main function of the biceps is elbow flexion, essentially bringing your lower arm toward your shoulder. As both heads attach to the scapula, there's also an element of shoulder flexion, particularly from the long head. The short head also aids in supination, which is a rotation of the forearm and hand to turn your palm upward. The main function of the brachialis, like the biceps brachii, is elbow elbow flexion, but it seems to reach peak activation when the wrist is in a neutral or pronated position. It's also important to note that the brachialis is the strongest of all the elbow flexors. So now that you understand the anatomy and biomechanics, let's go over the only three dumbbell biceps exercises you need for building bigger, more impressive arms. Exercise number one, dumbbell spider curl. The short head of the biceps have two main functions, elbow flexion and supination of the forearm, and it's most active when in a degree of shoulder flexion. Not only does the spider curl start with the arm in a degree of shoulder flexion, it also allows for a large degree of supination to occur at the forearm. Another great thing about this exercise is that it's very difficult to cheat, forcing you to keep tension on the target muscle. And if you want to make this exercise even more effective, hold the dumbbell right at the edge with your thumb and index finger touching the bottom of the dumbbell. This will force your hand into a larger degree of pronation, meaning you'll have to actively supinate, which will lead to higher activation in the short head of the biceps. Exercise number two, incline dumbbell curl. Because the long head crosses the shoulder joint, placing the forearm behind the body puts an extra stretch on this head of the biceps. In one study published in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine, they found that placing the biceps in 50 degrees of shoulder extension elicits the highest activation in the long head throughout the range of motion. To ensure the emphasis of the movement falls on the long head of the biceps and off of the anterior delt, the elbow needs to stay fixed until the biceps are through the mid-range at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. A common error I often see is people initiating the movement from the shoulder joint. The elbow has to start from a fully extended position while moving only the forearm for the initial part of the movement. It's only after this that the elbows can come forward slightly to fully contract the biceps. Keep in mind, both heads of the biceps will be active due to the exercise focusing on elbow flexion, but the element of shoulder extension places the emphasis on the long head. And exercise number three, dumbbell hammer curl with slow negatives. Lastly, we have an eccentric accentuated hammer curl. All this means is that we're going to be putting an extra emphasis on the negative portion of the rep. The eccentric portion of the lift accounts for 50% of the rep and is where most of the muscular damage occurs. 
For this exercise, aim to lower the weight under control for three to four seconds, then lift as fast as possible while maintaining control and repeat. The hammer curl is perfect for targeting the brachialis, which as we mentioned before, is more active when the forearm is in a degree of pronation or in a neutral position. There's also some evidence to suggest that using slow eccentrics helps to activate the brachialis to a greater degree, making this the perfect exercise to target this overlooked muscle. When performing this exercise, avoid shrugging your shoulders to get the weight up. Instead, keep the shoulders back and down and try to move nothing other than the elbows. This will ensure that the brachialis are bearing most of the load while also helping to avoid injury. Now that you've gained a comprehensive understanding of the biceps and the recommended exercises, let's explore how to structure your training volume throughout the week. Let's begin by determining the optimal number of sets per week for maximizing muscle growth. This 2022 meta-analysis compared three groups, a low volume group performing 12 weekly sets, a moderate volume group performing 12 to 20 weekly sets, and a high volume group performing more than 20 weekly sets. They concluded that a moderate range of 12 to 20 weekly sets per muscle group may be an optimum standard recommendation for increasing muscle hypertrophy. It is, however, important to note that your biceps are indirectly trained during pulling exercises such as pull-ups, chin-ups, and rows. As a general rule of thumb, half of the sets performed for any exercise that target the biceps indirectly should be taken into account. For example, if you complete 14 sets of pulling exercises during the week, seven of those sets should count toward the weekly volume for your biceps. Now, while there are countless ways to incorporate your biceps training into your workout split, I suggest sticking to your current routine while incorporating the three exercises discussed in this video and also keeping in mind the weekly volume recommendations we made. So there you have it the only three dumbbell exercises you need for building bigger biceps as well as some general training recommendations so that you can implement these exercises seamlessly into your current workout routine. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter whose muscle gains have stalled and are looking to jumpstart new muscle growth, grab a copy of our brand new program, Mass 5 Full Body. This is a high frequency full body workout for intermediate and advanced lifters who are looking to take their physique to the next level. And right now, you can get an additional 25% off by using the coupon code MASS25. If you wanna learn more, click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.